So last time we derived Feynman rules for gravity. And so today in this lecture, as an illustration of the implementation of Feynman rules, I'm going to compute the scattering of two scalar particles via single graviton exchange. And so the Feynman diagram for, the, uh, for this process is this one. So let me have it over here from my clipboard. So it is this one, right? Now, I don't think I can resize it right now. Let's try. Okay, I can. So let's just make it a bit small and let's put it somewhere over here. Okay, nice. Now, uh, I'm going to use the Feynman rules that we have derived in the uh, in the end of the last lecture. So if you want to go uh, and have a look at them, you can go and look at the uh, last part of the uh, previous lecture. So using those Feynman rules, uh, I'm going to write down the amplitude of this process and which is going to be, uh, or it is, where should I write it? Let's put this uh, thing somewhere over here and let's write it down over here. So we have two scalar particles and they're interacting uh, or they're scattering through the exchange of this graviton uh, over here. And let's say that this ha it has a, a momentum of Q, right? So I need a different color pen. So it has this momentum Q. Right, now let's write down the amplitude of this thing. It's going to be negative iota M is equal to iota kappa over two times uh, because this part is for these two uh, scalar particles that are coming in, right? So P1 and P2. So we'll have P1 mu, P2 nu, plus P1 nu, P2 mu, minus eta uh, mu nu, P1 dot P2 minus m squared, and this is for this vertex, right? So this uh, this first vertex that we have over here. So I think I should use this pen. So it's for this vertex, right? Where you see P1 and P2 coming in. Right, now uh, let's write down uh, for this exchange of this graviton, we have from our Feynman rules that we have, uh, this thing is equal to iota over Q squared and this tensor P mu nu alpha beta and that's your graviton right so that's the propagator and then coming back to this uh, this vertex this one we have uh, particles p with momentum p3 and p4 so I'll have iota kappa over 2 and uh, p3 mu p4 nu plus p3 nu p4 mu minus eta mu nu and the dot product of p3 and p4 minus m squared and that's all. So this thing is the amplitude for this uh, process where two scalar particles are interacting with the exchange of a graviton. So now if I do something interesting. Let's say I review this thing in a non-relativistic limit, which is a non-relativistic limit. What happens in that case? Well, we know, first of all, what do I mean by non-relativistic limit is that P mu is equal to uh, M and zero vector, right? Now, using this, I can transform this above amplitude as minus kappa squared over 4 m1 squared times m2 squared over q squared, which is equal to, if you use the value of kappa, you have minus 16 pi g m1 squared m2 squared over q squared, right? Now, this thing is a bit 
uh, it's a bit familiar, right? Because if I take a Fourier transform of this expression, what I get is something like this, which is minus g m1 m2 over r. And we all know what this is, right? This is the non-relativistic Newton's potential. And so we can see that in the non-relativistic uh, non uh, limit, we arrive at the result that we should expect and that's the uh, Newton's potential, right? Okay, so with this now and the previous lectures, we can say that we have uh, completed the construction of general relativity as a quantum field theory at tree level. Now, from here, you may ask, well, okay, but what about loop diagrams, right? And of course, I'll not leave you hanging like that. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give you an example of what you do when you have a loop diagram. So for illustration, I'm going to consider, uh, I'm going to consider uh, the one loop matter correction to the graviton propagator, which is given by uh, which is given by this diagram, right? So let's have this and let's put it somewhere here. Let's make it a bit small. It's too big. Somewhere over here. Okay, so now, why can I not get rid of this thing? Okay, fine. Now I can write down uh, the, the integral or the amplitude for this diagram. In, it would be in terms of the integral if I say that this loop has a momentum L, right? So I'll have to integrate over L, right? Because it's uh, forming a loop and all of this again comes from your uh, normal uh, course on quantum field theory, right? So let's write down the amplitude for this thing. It is simply going to be uh, the integral over d 4 L over, uh, you'll have, 2 pi cube, uh, sorry, 2 pi square, right? Because you have this, uh, uh, just one loop like this with two vertices. And you'll have iota kappa over 2. And we'll have, well, we first we have L alpha momentum and times uh, the other one would be due to conservation of momentum. You'll have L plus Q uh, to beta plus uh, you'll have L beta and L plus Q to alpha and that's one part of it. Then you have this, uh, well you have uh, iota over L squared, right, times iota over your conservation, you have L plus Q squared. And then finally you have this thing that's iota kappa over two L delta L plus Q uh, gamma plus L gamma L plus Q delta. Right, now let's say if you were to evaluate this integral or compute this loop, you'll, you'll arrive at a result that has a form of kappa squared over 16 pi squared times q gamma q delta uh, q delta q alpha and q beta right so you see you have these four terms like this and you'll have a 1 over epsilon plus natural log of q squared and you can see the uh, similarity of this loop uh, if you were to compare it with a loop that you would do in your QED or quantum electrodynamics. Now, the interesting part over here is that you will note that this expression, it needs four terms with, uh, or it needs terms, it needs, it, needs, uh, it needs terms with four derivatives of, of your field H mu nu, right? And only then, if you ha have those, then it can be cancelled. But we know that in the, in the Einstein's Hilbert action, 
you don't have uh, such terms, right? And so that means that you cannot cancel this thing. And if you cannot cancel this thing, it means that this loop or this integral is not renormalizable. So that's why we sometimes you might hear people saying uh, gravity is a re a non renormalizable theory, right? And so this is one of the or this is the reason why gravity is a non renormalizable theory, right? Okay, perfect. So now with this, I'm going to end this uh, lecture over here. And in the next lecture, we can, uh, there are two methods to dive into these loop diagrams. One is known as this uh, background field method, and you have heat kernel method. And heat kernel method is used uh, a lot as well. But before I begin those, I would like to start effective field theory and when we encounter loops in effective field theory, but just before that, I'm going to give, uh, I, I, I think I should uh, do that. I, I'll give the lectures on those background field method and uh, heat kernel method uh, before we come into the discussion of loops itself in effective field theory. So in the next time, we are going to start with effective field theory. Again, we have completed the construction of general relativity as a quantum field theory at a tree level.